what you're going to be experiencing here is what it's like with either of these two detectors to be driving on a road that has this technology being used to monitor uh, speed in real time for the purposes of uh, traffic reporting and and uh, traffic flow monitoring things along those lines these uh, devices are spread out about a mile apart on average uh, on each direction south and northbound lane in this case and lanes in this case they operate at a frequency or a duration of about 30 seconds apiece interval of 30 seconds and they the radar lasts for about a half a second and then it's off so to very sensitive detectors uh, particularly if you're unfamiliar with the area or the technology yeah, you're going to think you're going to be getting hit with instant on radar and that's very very unsettling uh, and if you're particularly close to the device the monitoring uh, device when it goes off it is like a hundred percent signal strength so it's like you're right on top of what would otherwise appear to be a, uh, a real instant on K trap so the thing that makes these things pretty tricky is they're not on all the time like a drone sign where you can easily know that, that you're approaching one these things come on and off full strength now I'm showing you both of these detectors not that I'm driving with these normally uh, like this but I just wanted to show you how uh, what it appears like when you're driving with either one of these detectors on a road that's monitored with this uh, type of technology we're going to be doing a, a closer examination of how these detectors alert to this shortly I'm going to pull over to the side of the road and position myself close to uh, two of these sensors one on each direction facing each direction of the highway but for now, I just wanted to give you guys a, a, a sense of what to expect if you're using a detector and you're driving on a road that happens to use this technology. pretty unsettling if you're not prepared you're unfamiliar with the area and you're driving with a sensitive detector like the Valentine and that thing goes off full blast if you're like me you'd probably be nailing the brakes pretty hard right about now in this case the virtue of having a little uh, slower detector is uh, it can be quite nice Having reviewed the company's website, it appears that Speed Info is employing a conventional 24.1 gigahertz K band radar transponder that is operating in an instant on short duration mode of about a half a second, maybe a little bit less. So unlike other radar uh, sources like uh, the uh, lane departure systems on some automobiles that are frequency modulated, there really is, in my opinion, I don't think there's any way for a detector to really discern the difference of this kind of radar source from a bona fide instant on K source. And uh, I think the only way that to effectively filter out these types of alerts is to intentionally slow the detector down and require that the K-band signal is of a certain duration before alerting to it. Now that's a real KA source we're getting here. That's California Highway Patrol that's behind us here. They run KA here. Valentine's sensitive to it in the rear. I'm pulled off to the side of the road. 
I've got the, uh, a stopwatch counting here and you'll see the significance of that in a second. We have a Valentine one on the right uh, which I'm going to power up, and then we have the new or 9500iX with the TSR, which is the uh, the traffic sensor rejection type uh, filtering, and we're going to show you how uh, that technology works to uh, minimize or eliminate the falses that that are presented by this very un unsettling form of traffic monitoring. So we're going to power up both detectors, and we have uh, the the sensing here uh, synchronized and as you can see at three minutes and we're going to get another one at three minutes and ten seconds here so their duration or their interval is about 30 seconds and we just happen to be positioned uh, close to two sensors one is uh, facing northbound the other one's facing southbound uh, which is why we're getting uh, two uh, pretty close by. We're going to get another one now at uh, 3 minutes 30 seconds. So you can see the, and then we're going to get another one here. And you can see at 340. So the interval here that we're picking up is uh, when it's an even minute, uh, 10 seconds after that. And then 30 seconds after that, which is uh, half past the minute. And then another uh, 30 seconds after that, which will be at 40 seconds. So the significance of the uh, stopwatch is to show you the durations here and when we expect to see the alerting. Now, both of these detectors are set to their default modes. Uh, the Valentine, obviously, is very sensitive and quick at that, uh, to K-band especially. Uh, the 9500iX is also a sensitive detector, but uh, not as quick. Uh, therefore, it's more quiet. And right now, we uh, have the detector uh, with the TSR filter off in its default mode. So, what we're going to do here is I'm going to power off the Valentine. Now that we've got the frequency of alerting here. And then we're going to look at the behavior of the 9500iX with the uh, TSR filter off in its default mode and then with its TSR filter on. Okay, I'm going to turn off the 95, I'm sorry, the uh, Valentine 1. And we're going to get a blast right now of radar at 10 seconds. And you'll see when we get the 30 seconds. There'll be another instant on blast of K, and we'll see if the 9500iX can see it. Yes, it does. We should see another one at right now. The iX did not alert to that one. And then the next time we're going to get a blast of radar will be when it hits six minutes precisely. Okay, it didn't alert to that one as well. Didn't alert to that one as well at 610. We should see another alert at 6 minutes 40 seconds. Now this is with the TSR filter off. So what this is showing is uh, you can even see in the standard mode the uh, the 9500iX and other M M4 platform type detectors aren't as quick to respond to brief durations of radar, instant on radar, which you're seeing here now. The TSR filter is off in its default mode. And uh, we're going to wait until we get the seven minutes exactly and see if we get an alert. Then I'm going to turn the Valentine back on. Then you're going to see. Yeah, pick that one up. You're going to see how the Valentine does alert at those uh, intervals. One more. 
and the IX did not alert to that one. Okay, now I'm going to turn back on the Valentine. And the next alert should happen at 7 minutes 30 seconds. There it is. We are picking up another K band signal here, which is why we hit the bogey counter of two for a second. We're picking up a weak K signal here. Okay, there was the instant on blast from the traffic sign at 740. Next alert should happen at the eight minutes exactly. And they both alerted that time. Next alert should be at 8.10. They're both alerting. We should get another alert in about 5 seconds at 8 minutes 30 seconds. Valentine alerts the 9500IX does not. And you can see at 840 the V1 alerts again, the 9500IX does not. So again, while we're looking at the effect of uh, the TSR filtering, which we haven't enabled yet, this is a good demonstration uh, of the relative quickness of the radar detectors, the brief durations of instant on radar instant on K. As you can see the Valentine it hasn't missed one. Uh, so the sweep patterns are quicker. I, I, I exp I actually imagine that the 9500IX is actually seeing it but it's waiting to see it for a particular given duration before alerting. And this is just an example of two different philosophies of companies on how they uh, report their uh, radar detections. Okay, I'm going to turn on the uh, TSR filter on the 9500IX and then we'll see what it does for the, the alerts. We would see one now at 11 minutes 40 seconds. You can see the 9500IX is completely silent. The next alert will be at 12 minutes exactly when we get that next radar blast. Okay, there it would have gone, and you can see that the IX has not alerted. Next one will be at 12 minutes 10 seconds. And there it is, it hasn't alerted. The escort uh, has incorporated what appears to be a uh, a delay or a additional requirement to see radar very much like or similar to Whistler's uh, filter 1, 2, and 3 mode on KA band where they slow the responsiveness of the detector uh, intentionally uh, and in this case it's on K band and uh, what that in fact does is it requires to see the radar source on K only in this case for a given duration before it qualifies it to be a legitimate alert and in doing so they effectively filter out all of these brief duration K instant on K shots that are taking place on roads like uh, Highway 101. I really have to give uh, Escort and Beltronics both uh, credit for going to great lengths to making uh, radar detector ownership and operation as uh, painless as possible and uh, you know their philosophy of eliminating alerts is uh, very evident in the evolution of their products here with all of these new sources of radar or laser that are interfering with conventionally built detectors uh, they're, they're, they're going the extra mile to really do their best at filtering out extraneous sources of, of alerts.